fall, sheriff's deputies responding to a tip arrived at a so-called horse rescue farm in Virginia to find nearly a hundred emaciated horses. Dozens were near death, some already dead, and in the course of trying to save the living, several more had to be euthanized. As horrific as this one story seems, we found it's not uncommon. One problem may be the differences between states that offer more safeguards, like Maryland, and states that some view as less strict, like Virginia. Chris Pabst from our affiliate WJLA has our report. Maddie was Carrie Reed's beloved horse, but now she cannot forgive herself, knowing he's never coming home. I'll probably live with the guilt for the rest of my life. Following neck surgery last year, Reed temporarily placed a 20-year-old saddlebred with a horse rescue. I thought he'd be safe, and he was safe with me. And... As Reed's health improved, she began the process to bring Maddie home. Then the news broke. 81 horses seized from Peaceable Farm in Somerset, Virginia. Seven found dead. Nine more euthanized, including Maddie the horse on the right. My horse was locked in a stall, was not given water or food for I don't even know how long. Peaceable Farm is a horse rescue registered as a nonprofit charity known as a 501c3 with up to 1.1 million in annual donations. Owner Ann Golan ran farms in Virginia and Maryland, but over the summer she moved all of her horses, including Maddie, to Virginia, where some say the protections are too loose. You believe the laws in Virginia do protect animals? I do. Lindsay Reams is with the VA Farm Bureau, which helps write the state's animal laws. So what happened in this case? The current animal care standards are strong and comprehensive, and unfortunately, something went wrong at the local level. And something is going wrong in many states, according to RateMyHorsePro.com. The site is sort of a consumer's report for all things equine. In 2015, Rate My Horse Pro covered eight horse rescue cases. After the founders allegedly starved the horses, they were tasked with saving. It happened across five states. All were nonprofits, or at least claimed to be. Debbie Hansen, spokesperson for Rate My Horse Pro, says these cases are only the ones that they know about. It can be very difficult for law enforcement or local authorities to know of the existence of a rescue in their area. There's no national registry, there's no state registry. So usually people hear of rescues through word of mouth, as social media. And Hansen says when authorities do act, it's a daunting task. They may show up at a farm and have to remove 20, 50 horses. What do you do? Where do they go? The reason Golan moved her horses to Maryland is not yet known. It doesn't surprise you she took her horses to Virginia. No. Ross Petticord heads Maryland's Horse Industry Board, which mandates that nonprofit horse rescues be licensed, registered, and inspected. We're the only state that I know of in the country that actually does this. For decades, Petticord says Maryland's nonprofit rescues have not had any horses seized, while other states, including West Virginia and Virginia, have. As for Reed, she believes had Maddie stayed in Maryland, where Golan's farm was being inspected, he'd be back home. I just can't imagine the amount of suffering. Soon after the seizure, peaceable farm owner Ann Golan was charged with 27 counts of misdemeanor animal cruelty. Little comfort to Reed. He was my friend. Golan faces misdemeanor animal cruelty because this is her first time being charged in Virginia. If it were to happen again in that state, Cheryl, she could face felony charges. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking the same thing. What about the money? Well, that's the next part of this investigation because Golan was running a nonprofit that was receiving millions of dollars, tax exempt dollars. It was supposed to help horses. Her horses were starving to death. So, where did that money go? And as we learn, that's a question many other states are also asking. Thanks so much, Chris Papps. And now a follow-up. The Centers for Disease Control still hasn't responded to our Freedom of Information request about the mysterious polio-like virus that's paralyzing U.S. children. But after our story viral threat, CDC did contact Full Measure with an updated case count, something it had declined to provide earlier. From January 1st to mid-December 2015, CDC reports 18 confirmed and likely cases of acute flaccid myelitis. Added to the 2014 outbreak, that's 133 children paralyzed by the mysterious disease. 
An update to our report last week on a synthetic material called crumb rubber that's used on athletic fields across the country. There are concerns that the substance may be linked to dozens of cases of cancer found in athletes who played on the surfaces. Members of Congress have called for answers in the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Centers for Disease Control. Last Sunday, we said Congress was still awaiting answers from the EPA. During the holidays, the EPA did send a letter to the House Energy and Commerce Committee stating that information from limited studies shows no health risk from playing on fields using crumb rubber. They also said those studies have limitations and are not comprehensive. And still ahead on Full Measure. Before the real campaign of 2016 begins, a look at some of the amusing antics of 2015. Please don't take a walk with me. I'd rather stay right here at home.